Hi everyone, Stepan here. Uh, today I'm going to be playing a training game because I haven't done so in a while and I've been working on tactics basically. Uh, that, that was all of my training since I finished Hvar Open. I know that that's my weakest point and I, I want to improve so I've been grinding tactics uh, for more than five hours every day uh, which has left me tired uh, and but, but I think there will be progress maybe not yet because it's hard to uh, apply what you do in training so early on so usually I've been doing doing tactics for an hour a day or something like that but now when I've focused on it it's it's really hard and I try to calculate all the variations until the end I try to focus on not missing continuations or in between moves or well, I mean, I mean, sometimes I fail, sometimes I don't. But uh, the, the the problems that I do fail, I try to realize what I did wrong and, and so on. And for, for the channel, I'm preparing opening theory finally. Uh, I have four more openings to go in the D4 series. Uh, the Tore attack, the Kohli system, the Old Indian and the Richter Veresov. After that, I'm moving on to the English opening. Uh, currently, I'm working on the four d4 openings that that i have left and it takes me time so i guess the first one could be published tomorrow but maybe in two days but in any case uh, now that i've finished covering my games i will be focusing on theory until i finish the english and once i'm done with the english which i've been studying for a long time now it's I know that some of my opening videos are not optimal. This one, I, I, I want it to be as good as possible, as good as it can be. So I've been going through a lot of games, a lot of books and basically everything available on the English because I'm trying to play it myself. And when I try to learn an opening, I, I tend to study from all sources possible. By the way, my laptop seems to be overheating again for some reason, even though it's not warm in Croatia and even though I'm not doing anything on it. So there may be a humming noise. I, I don't know if you can hear it now. For some reason, it starts doing that sometimes. I've cleaned it a million times and I don't think dust is the, is the issue. In any case, uh, yeah, so, so once I've covered... Uh, the four openings I have left in D4 and then the English. Uh, I will probably be playing some tournaments again. But if I don't, because I don't think there's a lot available. There's a tournament at the beginning of December in Spain, but it's full. I really wanted to play it. Uh, and yeah, in any case, if, if, I, if I don't manage to find a tournament to play, then I'm going to be patching up the E4 series and I have, I want to say 30 videos I want to do to, to patch it up. There are a lot of holes in the E4 series. By the way, it's really hard to, to get the game. I don't know why. I don't know what my rating is actually. I haven't played. Okay, yeah, finally. Okay, I'm, I'm gonna go D4. My opponent's rating is 2200, my rating is 2200, which is nice. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go C4, uh, which is something I've been... Let me just see if everything is okay with the video. I've been, well, studying... If you saw my recent... Uh, my last tournament game, I actually played this position. Okay, uh, I don't know this move, I have to be honest. I don't know knight bd7 here. Okay, th this this has caught me off guard. Probably if I go e3, he's going to go e6, transposing to the semi-slav. Uh, I cannot go bishop g5, so this may be a way to avoid bishop g5 lines. I've been playing the semi-slav for six years and I don't know this move. I'm a bit ashamed. If I play D C uh, cd, then he probably has an inferior version of an exchange slav because his knight is not on c6. But I will have a hard time developing my bishop to f4 
because he has queen b6 without too many consequences because the, uh, the diagonal has been covered already. I'm just going to play a normal move. I, I, I'm not going to experiment. I, I kind of wanted to play cd. Okay, now it's a normal opening. I'm gonna go queen c2 just like I did in the tournament game I showed you yesterday. Uh, bishop e7 is strange. I think it's playable, but bishop d6 is more common. Now it's really hard to prepare e5, so he will probably go for c5 at some point. So I'm just gonna go b3. He castles, I go bishop b2. He probably goes b6, bishop b7, c5. Yeah. Okay, so either bishop b7 or castles. I guess bishop b7. I'm gonna try to occupy the e5 square now that the bishop has been developed to e7. Does my bishop belong to d3 or or to e2? If he isn't going to be playing for e5, I think d3 is the best square. Although if I play bishop d3, then dc, bc, c5, and my knight could be well. He could be able to give up his bishop, but I don't think that's good. I'm gonna play bishop d3 because bishop e2 seems kind of passive. Again, if you saw my uh, tournament game I, I recorded yesterday, I'm not too familiar with the queen c2 anti Meran from the white side, but I want to start playing it in, in tournament games, so I guess this is a good way to practice it. I did play it uh, for the first time last week in that league game. I was sort of experimenting and I drew, but could have gone either way. Okay, c5 straight away. Now if I play cd5 and he plays ed5, cd5, ed5 castles, rook c8, am I in trouble on c2? He will have 94 ideas. Do I want to allow dc? I don't think so. So I'm going to take cd. I think he has to take with the pawn. If he doesn't take with the pawn, then I have e4. Or he gives up the bishop. So if, if, if knight d5, then knight d5, bishop d5, e4. And if knight d5, knight d5, bishop, uh, pawn d5, then his bishop, bishop is simply bad. So he has to take with the pawn, I think. Again, I'm not too familiar familiar with the theory here. I'm just trying to play sensible moves. So castles rook c8 seems normal. And if castles rook c8, I could go queen e2. I also could go knight e5. Okay, I'm just going to castle. I don't want to play unnecessary moves. He hasn't castled yet, so maybe rook c8 is a bit premature. Okay, castles. Now... I want to go rook c1 to start occupying the c-file. But I'm also very tempted by knight e5 because he cannot take. So knight e5, if he goes rook to c8, I go queen e2, then he could take. So I'm just gonna go rook c1 first. And th the reason I want to play rook c1 is because I want to keep my queen on the diagonal. I want to be able to play queen to b1. Okay, so queen e2 is also a move, but queen b1 seems very dangerous for him in conjunction with knight e5. But queen e2 transfers the queen to the king's side. 
So queen e2, he cannot go c4. Uh, he could go knight e4. But then bishop e4. No, no, no. Queen e2, he plays knight e4. But am I afraid of knight e4? Queen e2, knight e4. Queen b1 seems like a strange move. I don't want to play queen b1. Queen e2, knight e4. Can I just go rook fd1? Rook fe1, so that cd ed is a threat. I'm gonna play queen e2. Queen b1 could be good, but I, my queen seems very much offside. I know that I don't have knight e5 anymore. But at least my queen is not on b1. Now I'm not afraid of knight e4. And it's not easy for him to develop his d7 knight. Okay, rook e8 makes sense. Plays against, plays uh, for for cd. So I'm just gonna play rook fd1. Which now, if cd, I'm gonna play knight takes d, and then my rook is lined up against his queen, and I also have queen f1, which may be useful. Although I did allow uh, cd, knight d, knight e5, and knight c5. I just gave his knight some squares. If, if Well, if I take with the knight, I have given his knight some squares. So am I afraid of cd, e, d? If bishop f8, then queen f1. If bishop b4, then again, queen f1, my knight is defended. I'm very tempted to take with the knight, cd, knight d, and then on knight e5, just go bishop b1. Yeah, okay, so knight d, knight c5, bishop b1, knight e5, bishop b1. I'm gonna take with the knight, this may be unsound, but I've given his knight squares, but he has an isolated pawn, a blockaded bishop. And I'm not really losing the bishop pair. And now that my d pawn is gone, my bishops look amazing. So if I'm going to have bishops on b1 and b2, and also knight f5 coming in some positions, this seems pretty good for me. I know that it's positionally incorrect, probably. But then again, he doesn't have knight e4, because I can just take it. I need to bear in mind that anything taking on, on d5 would lose my queen. Okay, he wants to occupy e4, I'm just going to go bishop to b1. I love my bishops. <laughs> my bishops seem amazing. Does he have bishop a6 now? I did not consider bishop a6.
Can I go knight cb5? Bishop a6, knight cb5, knight fd7, a4. Then I lose the b3 pawn if I move my knight away from d4. Can I go queen f3? Queen f3 supports knight f5. Also prepares queen h3. So I don't think I'm afraid of bishop a6. And again, I'm definitely not afraid of knight e4 now, because I can just take it. If knight c4, knight e4, knight e4, bishop e4, uh, let's say rook c1, bishop c1, d4, Okay. Why is he allowing bishop f5? What's wrong with bishop f5? He has to play knight e6. Bishop f5, knight e6. Knight e6, f e6. Do I have a good follow-up? I don't know if I want to bring his f-pawn to the center, but it's very tempting to play bishop f5. I could also play bishop f5, knight e6, and queen f3. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to misplace his, his knight. I think it's much better for his knight to be on e6. So if I go queen f3, he could go knight d4. But then rook d4, and everything is fine. So queen f3, I'm also looking at knight takes e6, f takes e6, and queen b5, but that doesn't work because he has bishop c6. So the idea of queen f3 and queen h3 seems nice. I don't think he should play g6. So he doesn't have knight d4 because rook d4. And he loses the exchange. And if he doesn't play g6, I'm just going to go queen to h3. Which means that he has to play bishop f8. And then there are tricks with knight takes d5 and the rook on c8 being loose, but I don't think I can calculate all of that <coughs> in a rapid game. So if g6 I'm definitely taking, and I'm taking with the bishop I think. I just love my pieces. My pieces are all really well placed.
How can I increase the pressure? <coughs> It seems that there has to be something tactical here, but I don't see it. It seems that there has to be some tactical blow that wins me the game. All of my pieces seem very optimal. My knight on c3 is kind of in the way. So I'm thinking about knight e2, knight f4. That's why queen f3 may be a, a good move for two reasons, threatening queen h3 and playing knight e2, knight f4. So let's say it's my move and I play knight e2. Takes on c1, takes on c1. Let's say rook c8, rook takes, queen takes, knight f4, queen c2. Is impossible because my bishop covers. That seems good. Knight e2 seems like a very good move. <coughs> Knight c2, I'm sorry. I have to be a bit careful about taking on e6 and allowing d4 while my queen is on f3 because then my knight on c3 is hanging and my queen as well. He has 7 minutes, I have 9.48. This is a rare, rare case of me being ahead on the clock. So it's my <coughs> if it's my move, I would either play queen h3 or knight e2. If I play queen h3, he has to okay. Well this goes directly into my plan. I wanted to play knight e2, so why not? If I play knight e2 and he plays knight takes d4, then I can simply play knight takes d4. So that doesn't work, I'm just gonna go knight e2. I wanted to play knight e2 anyway, so I'm not going to spend too much time. I mean, I could also take with the rook, but I don't have to. Now that the bishop is on c5, after I play knight takes e6, he cannot play d4 because I play knight takes c5. And on bishop f3, uh, knight d7, bishop e2, knight f6, check, gf6, rook e1. Actually wins a piece. Now I've also opened up my b2 bishop. This system, I mean, if if what he was doing is a theoretical line, is really good for white. I think this is a great version of the IQP. He has no attack. I'm the one with the attack. Now if he plays g6, I can simply play bishop takes e6. So now I think I may be winning. I think there has to be 
something deadly in this position. He shouldn't have allowed bishop f5. Queen d7 was a really bad move from a human perspective. Also my knight, okay, I'm just going to take with the knight, I don't want to do anything stupid. This I've already calculated, now again knight d4 fails to either rook d4 or bishop d4. I'm just going to take with the bishop to keep my rook on c1 uh, defended by a rook, so that I don't have to give up the c5. Now I have the bishop pair, and it's the best bishop pair in the world. <coughs> he cannot play g6. It doesn't matter if he plays rook c1, I think. Well, it kind of does, because there's no rook on, on e8 in that case, but still. On c8, excuse me. If he plays rook c1, then rook c1. And he shouldn't play rook c8 to make sure he doesn't lose the exchange. Okay. Yeah, I don't want to take with the bishop. So now, aha, okay, so now the rook is not on c8. So rook takes, knight takes d4. Okay, I'm just going to take with the rook. <coughs> now he has knight d4. Because if I play bishop d7, he plays knight f3 check. And if I play bishop d4, he can just move his queen away. He's not losing the exchange. But it's not really clear where he moves his queen. Ah. Okay, I have to I have to take with the bishop. Okay, so now how can I use my advantage? I think I've missed something. I had to have missed something. I still should have a better position because I have a bishop pair, the bishop pair, and he has an isolated pawn. So let's try to force this. Bishop f6, if queen f6, bishop d7, he has to play queen f3, I go gf3, he goes, let's say rook d8 or rook b8, I go rook, B7, uh, rook c7. That's not enough. <coughs> I don't think I have bishop h7. He could be threatening queen a3 at some point. What does he do against queen h3 in this position? Queen h3, the threat is bishop f6, followed by queen h7. If he plays h6, then 
then bishop f6, queen f6, and I don't have anything. And I would like to make Luft for my king. It seems scary to leave. Uh, my back rank undefended if queen a3 could be a threat. Okay, I, I need to think faster. He could be threatening knight e4. Okay, I'm just gonna play h3. <clears throat> I, I I feel like this is the safest move. I need to do something about my back rank so that I can against queen a3 I can play rook to c7. I need to prevent counterplay first. I realize that he has knight e4, but queen e7 was worrying me more. This I don't understand. If I play bishop f6 now, queen takes f6, rook to c7, can he throw in d4 yes he can if i ever play bishop f6 he can play d4 first okay so i'm going to think about this differently what if i retreat my bishop and try to play for a battery with bishop and queen lined up. I feel like I need to get my queen away from, from f3. That's troubling me. So I'm just gonna go queen d1. I don't like my queen being a liability. I don't think I have attacking chances if he can play d4 after bishop f6. Now I want to play something like bishop b1 and queen d3. This should help matters, I think. So okay, bishop b1. He should probably play bishop a6 now. I don't think he has any other good moves. Because if he allows queen d3, that's... That could be the end of the game. I cannot lift the blockade on d4. If he ever plays d4, I'm not better at all. If bishop a6, queen c2, he cannot play rook c8 because I can just take it twice and it's mate. My bishop is controlling h7. 
So bishop a6 may actually be a bad move. <clears throat> bishop a6, queen c2, he has to play g6. He does, he has to play g6. And then I can inf infiltrate with queen c7. So bishop a6 is bad. If bishop a6 is bad, how can he prevent queen d3? If he goes knight e4, I go queen d3, and I'm threatening f3 on the next move. I don't think there's a way to prevent that. Okay. I'm going to take and play queen d3. Aha, now on knight e4, f3, he has f5. Or, or queen d3, knight e4, queen d3, knight e4, f3, knight g5, h4. Okay, I'm going for it because I don't see his follow up. Now it's even worse for him because the bishop is undefended. <clears throat> I have four minutes, he has one minute. If he plays g6, I take on f6 and take on d5. That should be clearly winning. Okay. I think queen h7 just wins a pawn if he takes with the g-pawn and if he takes with the queen I can just play queen d5 because on queen a1 I have queen d3 or queen d8 mate actually. So in threatening queen d8 mate he cannot play queen a1. Okay now let's stop and think. <clears throat> I don't have to rush. He wants to play bishop b7 or he wants to play bishop e6. So I think bishop e4 is a good move, preventing bishop b7. And on bishop e6, I have queen a8 trading queens into a winning endgame. So I think this has to be fine. I don't think f5 does a lot. This should just be game over. I don't see why I shouldn't be winning a piece here. If bishop b7, queen b7, Jesus, sometimes I'm a moron.
Okay, again preventing counterplay. He has 15 seconds. I don't have to rush. I'm just going to prevent queen c1 check. The endgame should be fine. <coughs> I don't think he has, he has any chances to hold. And if he doesn't play bishop e6 immediately, then I play b4 and it's easily winning, I think. Wow, he doesn't play bishop e6. He wants to go behind. Okay, I don't want to allow bishop to d3, so I either play e4 or I play king f1. King f1 seems better. King f1, bishop to b2, a3. Okay. Where do I want my bishop? I'm guessing longest diagonal possible. But I also like gaining a tempo. And I would also like to prevent king to b5. So let's not rush. Let's play king d2, king c5, king c3. Okay, that should be the first step. I don't want to allow his king into the dark squares. Okay. Putting his pawns on dark squares is a good idea. But that gives me time to improve my king, I think. <clears throat> now I'm ready for b4. Huh. So if I go f3, he will have to go something like bishop b7, bishop a6, bishop f1. But if I go g3, his bishop has a lot of squares. So I kind of like f3 f3 if bishop b7 i can go bishop b5 we can also go king d4 yeah i'm gonna play f3 because it's with tempo i'm gonna play, play f3 i don't want to allow okay this does this, this is not a good plan. He should have gone bishop b7. Now he has no counterplay. This is now ideal for me because his bishop is completely offside. He doesn't have infiltration squares and I can just evict his king. Okay. If I play king d4, I think it's easily winning. Or without any complications, because my king is ideal. Why didn't he... why? Why? Why is he allowing this? He's really not playing this endgame precisely. Just like I didn't play my endgame in a tournament game in Hvar. Now my king is actually dominating his king and they started from g1. Now he's trying to go around, so let's prevent that. I'm gonna put my bishop on d3, that's the safest square. And I also want to play quickly because he is in time trouble, 5 seconds left. He 
she's trying to play h4 I don't want to play anything that would harm my position but I like g4 if g4 he has to play h4 I play f4 he doesn't have to take then again I don't want to allow h4 Oh, I can play h4 h4 g takes h4 bishop to e8 so h4 g h4 bishop e8 h3 g h3 bishop h3 bishop h5 okay i'm gonna play h4 i like this okay b4 this doesn't change things too much, I think. I liked h4. I think this was a good idea. Although I've traded too many pawns, I made sure that my pawns are not stuck on light squares. Okay, let's return the bishop to the best diagonal, preventing king infiltrations. Okay, let's push the pawns. If I don't allow king a4, I don't see any source of counterplay for him. So, what's the best diagonal? I need to lift the blockade on e6. So I can either go bishop h5, bishop g4, or bishop a4, bishop b3. I like bishop a4. Again, e6 is the square he's going to be blockading on, so... Okay, let's lift the blockade straight away. I don't want to allow bishop e6. Now let's push. Ha, huh, king or pawn, this is interesting. <laughs> I think king, because then I have f6 with tempo. Okay, king. Better king means better chances I have a light squared bishop so there is no wrong colored bishop problem here so I'm assuming I can just take but which endgame do I want with the g pawns or with the b pawns or with the a pawns If I take, his king has access to c5.
I'm not gonna take. This way I can gain a couple of tempi. If he wants to trade, that's fine. I get to play f6 with tempo. Bishop, bishop f5 shouldn't work. Bishop f5, king f5, takes, takes. Okay, f6. Oof. No trading allowed. I didn't allow him to give up a piece. Now I'm feeling very happy. This is game over, definitely. His king only has one square. And I'm just going to do this and pick up the pawn or pick up the bishop. His king is completely cut off, so it's there is no counterplay. Okay, now I will have to reroute my bishop into a winning pawn endgame because he is going to have to play b5 and then I have to play king c5 and then he plays. Okay. Yeah, the pawn endgame is winning. Uh, ah, the pawn endgame may not be winning. Bishop c4, bishop h5, ah, and then I take king takes b5, I play king takes b5. Wait, 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 I, I don't have bishop c4, I'm hallucinating. I need to keep control over over f7. Okay, let's just waste a couple of moves. I need to gain some time on the clock. Should I push my pawn to c7? To, to f7. So the problem is, bishop d7, he plays king f7. I play bishop takes b5, and he moves his bishop away. Ah, but I can cover the, the, the light squares, I'm stupid. No, 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 he, he doesn't have anything. No, no, I just covered the light squares, that's it. I'm an idiot. Uh, so what do I start with? Okay, here.
I need to prevent bishop d7 after king takes pawn bishop c4. Oh, okay. Oh, it's, uh, okay. Whew. I'm very happy about this game, although I may have won it in a much easier way. Let's let's have a look at the game. Oh. Okay. Uh, let's see the theory first. Okay, I want to check out this idea. E3 is bad here? Okay, let's ignore this. Let's pretend we are in a normal anti meran Bishop d3 is okay. c5 has never been played. Why? c5 white is slightly better. cd is correct, td is correct, castles is correct. Rook c1 is okay. Queen e2 is good. Wow, bishop a6, I never would have thought of that. I thought my bishop was much better. Why is bishop a6 a good move? Okay. Rook fd1 is now the best move, which I did play. Cd4, knight d4, good. Okay. Bishop f5 straight away. Almost winning, plus two. Can you guys see the evaluations? Okay, yes you can. Bishop b5 and bishop f5 are best moves. Bishop b1 almost equal. Bishop f5, knight e6, queen f3 is good. Knight e2 is good. Okay, this was all for forced. h3 is good, yes! Okay, sorry about being so excited. It was a human move for resolving kingside issues. Queen d1 is okay. Bishop b1 is a blunder, loses most of my advantage. I never considered a4. I don't understand queen to d2. Oh yeah, I don't I do understand queen d2. The idea is queen b2 or queen c3. Okay, that makes sense. Actually, what's the defense to this simple plan? Okay, let's say here, and let's say here. Ah, oh, he has 98. Okay. Bishop b1, I think, is a human plan that... King f8. Taking on f6 is a blunder. 
Okay, I should have played queen c3 and then he again probably plays knight e8. He doesn't play knight e8? Okay, this is too much for me. But bishop f6 is bad, I should have kept the tension. I don't under understand how it can be bad, I'm just winning a pawn. Okay, now let's see the end game. King f1. I don't think I have to check these moves. Okay, f g3 was better, but I I didn't want to allow him to blockade everything. Yeah, bishop b1 is bad. He should have gone to the other side. King d4, yeah, now the engine says a great advantage. Here, here. h4 is bad. Oh, come on, I was so happy about that move. f4 is better. Okay, f4 is better, now I see it. Because it doesn't trade off all the pawns. I was afraid if f4, he would take, take and play h4. This seemed bad to me. Because these are very easy targets and this pawn is close to queen. Okay, but h4, I should still be slightly better. What? What? Bishop e8 is a blunder. Why? Oh, because he plays h4 first. My god, I'm a moron sometimes. Ah, okay. No, yeah, I, I lost my advantage completely with this h4 idea. It simply doesn't work. Now let's have a look at this. Did he hold the draw at some point? King takes plus 4. What? What? Why is king d6 so bad? I don't understand it. What's the difference? Let's say I do go here and he plays the same thing again. Ah, now I don't allow b5. That's the point. And if he goes the other way. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Now I see it. King d6 is a stupid move. Yeah, king d6 is a stupid move. The engine says, uh, or the table base says, everything is a draw. Wow. Why is this a draw? Okay, let's see. Apparently he can hold. Bishop f1 is the blunder. Okay, if he plays bishop g4 instead, and I try to win, and he goes back. Okay. How do I win after bishop f1? Ah. So the end game we went into should actually be a draw. But apparently this one What's the difference here? What happens if he just waits? Ah, okay, he cannot wait here. Ah, I'm putting him in, in Zugzwang. This is insane. This is a very, very nice endgame. Okay, I'm not going to spoil this for myself, but lo by looking at it with the engine, I'm going to analyze it by myself because I want to understand it. I'm just going to go through the end of the game. What? What? Okay, I... I Okay, I, I'm not going to spoil it for myself by analyzing with the engine. I'll just show you without looking too much. Let's hope I made no, no mistakes from here on. Okay, this is fine. I, I need to analyze this and I need to understand it. Uh, spoiling it with the engine, firstly, I won't understand a lot. Secondly, it's going to ruin my analysis. I hope you got something from the game. <laughs> okay, thanks for watching. Uh, see you tomorrow, guys. Bye. Stay tuned for more chess.